This interview deals with serious subject matter, including mental health topics such as depression and suicide. We hope that by shedding light on this difficult topic that our combined audiences can start a conversation with someone you trust. Please watch or listen to this interview at your own discretion, and if you are suffering with depression, thoughts of suicide, or are in a crisis, please talk to someone. Here are some numbers you can call. Remember, you are not alone, and you matter. Welcome back to A Conversation With. So this week I have another special guest with me. I have Jay Kishan Plaha, and he is a semi-professional cricketer and athlete and YouTuber and artist, and the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> I'm like, where do we stop? Where do we end? I don't know. But anyways, thank you, Jay, for joining us. Um, he goes by J Man. It's your boy J Man on YouTube, and like you can check him out. I'll link it in the description. Yo, yo, guys! It's your boy J Man. We're back again for the comeback series, episode part nine. You know, we're coming to. Um, he's got a ton of energy, and his videos are quite motivating. So, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. And uh, let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's get this started. <laughs> so it's like 8 a.m. in London because you're located in London and it's 1 a.m. where I am. So night owl and the early bird and we're just we're making this work. So it's good. It's good. We're That's getting the worms. Called. We're trying to catch, <laughs> catch the worms now. <laughs> All right. So... I want to talk about your journey. Um, again, where do we begin? So let's say end of high school and then your plan was uni, but then things changed and you went to India. So yeah. let's fill, fill us in. Like what happened? What caused that pivot? And how did you end up in India playing cricket? So uh, basically, obviously, my dream was always to be a professional. I okay. think so at a young age, so starting to play cricket at three years old. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a big in the air. But I wasn't taking it very seriously. Like, obviously, I would take it serious, but I wasn't yeah. training the way I should be training now. Okay. So obviously I was on the, on the other side, so I was a quite little chubby kid, you know, <laughs> trying, to, trying to bat my You're way. You're a cute kid. I've seen photos. <laughs> Yeah, so I was a quite chubby little kid. And then um, when, uh, so obviously after school, we finished, we go to college and stuff. So i done mechanical engineering, um, mm -hmm. level three, uh, extended diploma in that, which is okay. like a BTEC. And then from there, it's always like, even at college, I, I used to get phone calls at home. Oh, where is he? Oh, he's training cricket. So like I used to like do my coursework, get everything done and tell the teacher I'm going, I need to go and train. So it was quite balanced for me. Um, mm -hmm. And then when I went to uni, so let's say example, we went to uni. Um, I enjoyed it. I was doing sports studies. So mm -hmm. for the first like two months, I'd done mechanical engineering, but then I didn't enjoy it anymore. So I started going into the sports side. Then I completely just was like, I can't do this because it's not, it's something that I'm not enjoying. So why should I force myself to do it? And then uh, I dropped out. I took a gap year. And in that gap year, I flew out to India to play mm -hmm. cricket out there and then was getting a lot of practice. And then you start getting recognition and obviously, you know, training with higher quality coaches. And then um, I started bowling against like, you know, like top players like Virat Kohli. Mm -hmm. uh, I met Sachin Tunduka. Um, oh, I, so I was staying next to him, next to his house. So because my uncle lives there and, you know, and then spent six, seven months out there through the last couple of years, just training hard. And then, you know, I was flying around quite a bit as well and then like traveling. And then obviously you get selected for net bowling, which is quite different. Net bowling is like um, an opportunity for youngsters to bowl at the professional players, you know, just help them warm up in the game. Some people get the opportunity, like some players. Okay. So if you're bowling well, you can go and bowl to the professional players. You get but that's yeah. amazing. That's yeah, so that's, cool. 
Yeah, and then from there, I started getting recognised. I think um, I was supposed to have a little bit of some trials coming up with the minor counties. Okay. Obviously, I got injured after that, so that's that's. Yeah. that's yeah. So that's where the injury. So before we talk about that injury, let's backtrack. So where is your family from? So my mom was born in India, Chandigarh. Okay. And then my dad was born in Kenya. I think it's Mubasa or uh, really? Nairobi. Yeah. So well, my yeah. mom's from Kenya. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Cool. yeah. But the Kenyan blood, you know, Definitely. the athletic blood, the athletic blood. <laughs> yeah, just um, just out here now, just trying to make them proud and. Give him a bit of a chilling life, really. So I think you're definitely doing that. Um, but where did the love for cricket come from? I think it was growing up, I think, because my dad was a, a fast bowler himself. So Okay. Uh, so he used to play and he used to bat. Okay. And okay. I think it's just it's just in the blood, I think, um, you yeah. know, watching games, you know, getting up at like four in the morning, you know, watching like Tanduka bat. Or, you know, watching like other players, but, you know, Callis, these type of players, you know, and just and just looking at it. Every time, obviously, there would be an India game on. So it's yeah. like four in the morning, like over there, I think it's like 8 a.m. or something. So you're just like, you know, getting up early in the morning, watching game. And then you know, your dad's running around and you're screaming because you know, India's winning and stuff. And, and then obviously, then when you start playing the sport, I think, you know, um, and then I just fell in love with it. And then I was not really a fast bowler. I was a spinner originally until like 17. Then I switched to bowling fast, um, which is something that I always had in me. I think okay. the aggression, the passion, everything, you just start showing. And obviously then I bat as well. So as a batting ball round, I do both things. And then just, I don't know, it's just one of them ones where you just fall in love. And then there's a lot of competition. So like when you're playing against your mates, you know, you want to win. You know, as soon as you lose, you don't like losing. So there's a thing where it's just like, I hate losing. So it's just like... Competitive ah, and like immersive, sort of like once you're in it, you're kind of in it, right? You're just in the zone. I think you lose track of everything and then you know, time flies by. like, And then you're just in that zone. You just don't know what's going on. And then you come back out the pitch and then you're back to normal. It's like, hey, you're right. <laughs> but, you know, everything you leave on the pitch, I think that's what I believe. Just, you know, everything that you do, you just leave everything on the pitch. Don't come back and say, I could have done this, could have done that. But I think that's the key. And then, yeah, just I think my dad's motivation as well. And then obviously everyone around, you know, mom as well. Yeah. And then I just was like, yeah, I want to do this. I like it. I enjoy this. And, you know, sometimes I think after the injury, we can talk about that later. But, you you know, you've got to love it. And that's that's what makes you makes you achieve it, I think. Um, and then just don't overpressurize yourself to do it. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people overpressure. Oh, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. No pressure. Just work on yourself. Focus on yourself and you, you'll get it. And just believe, just make sure you believe 100 times. And age is a factor. It doesn't matter what the age is. So, okay. How, so you were in India when you got injured? And this injury was like serious. Sure. This was, yeah, this was on. I saw uh, the video and I was like, oh, wow. This, <laughs> Why this, don't you just quickly like explain the injury to our viewers? I might add a clip no. in here. You know, I've hurt too much. Basically, uh, the injury actually happened here in the UK. It was at okay. the Oval Cricket Ground. It was just a normal Saturday. I remember I got up, I go to my mom. At that time, I was a meat eater. So I was like to my mom, like, obviously now I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian. But I remember I was like in the morning, I was like, mom, chicken, chul, I need <laughs> chicken and rice, you know, tandoori chicken at night. I'm going to come back after training. It's going to be a hard day, long day. Yeah. This is what I want. I'm coming back. I'll probably be back around five, six ish, no problem. Mm -hmm. So I left the house. I'm going there. I'm like doing all these Snapchats, like, yeah, I'm just like chilling, put my headphones in, you know, zoning out in the zone, you know, listening to some stuff. And then I went there and then I was I was excited because it was an Australian team. And um, you know, some of my favorite players were there, like David Warner, you know, Steve Smith, you know, just watching the thing is it's a beauty when you watch these type of players you get more hungry to play because it's like, you know, I'm bowling against this guy and you know, like if I'm making things happen, you know, I believe that I'm making things happen. So it yeah. was good. I was getting a lot of good feedback that day. And then literally like two balls before, like I got injured, my mate goes to me, do you want to swap nets? Like I want to bowl to them and then you can bowl here. Mm -hmm. What and does I that mean? Up. I don't know what that means. but So basically, so there's like four nets in the middle of the, in the, in the stadium. 
Okay. They will be like batting and we're, we're just bowling to them all okay. day uh, through that, that period. So it's like, um, so he was like, do you want to swap nets? So I was in this one, this section yeah. here. He was in this one. And I said to him, no, because I want to bowl to like the best player right. uh, on the team. And um, so the next ball, that's when it just went. Oh. So it hit me like over here. Um, basically, for those listening board. and not watching, Jay's like pointing to his like head. Like it was like I can't even tell you when I saw the video. I was like, oh, like you it's could feel it. Do you remember rocky. anything after? No, I was actually conscious. The thing is, it, it, it is I was actually conscious. Wow. Yeah, so even the doctors were saying to me, it's, it's quite strange because I think normally when you get a head injury, you start you know feeling sick and stuff and yeah. this and that. No symptoms of that. So it's just something where I just look at it and I look up and I'm like, it's a blessing in disguise because like I'll, that day I remember I bowled, mm -hmm. I saw it coming. So it was like, by the time I looked up, it was there already. And I yeah. was like, this is either going to take my eye out. It's going to break my nose. Yeah. If I try and, you know, try and do something about it. But it came, it was too fast. And then, um, and then it hit me here. And then I remember I dropped because obviously yeah. my whole right side switched off. So it was like paralyzed for like 30 minutes. My right side, I couldn't feel anything. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> and I was, and then um, I could see like three visions. So it was like three visions. And then I just heard a loud, like, you know, like a noise in my ears, like concussion. Yeah. And then it was just like, and then I dropped on the floor. And then all I saw is like 600 people like around me <laughs> because obviously I can see three, three of everything. And then I took it a deep breath. It looked painful, so like I don't even want to imagine how. Yeah, how did yeah. you like? Could you feel the pain initially, or after you yeah, dropped? I, and then I it felt broke. it. I felt it because there's quite a lot of like blood coming out from here a little bit. Better so God. it's good that the blood came out. Um, but then I was just like I couldn't feel my right side, so I thought like I'm paralyzed or something. Something's happened. Like, yeah, so I couldn't feel my right leg, my right arm. They were like doing all these like tests. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. I can move this. This was fine. This was no problem to move. But Left this side. just like dropping right like side. that. And then they were like, get the stretcher on quickly. Like, yeah. this guy, need, we need to take him to the hospital. And then obviously, I don't know with me, I just started like, I was like, I was like to the, like one of the guys. Um, so he was like, he helped out quite a bit. His name is Richard. He's like the Australian like medical coach and everything. Mm -hmm. And I go to him, am I dead? Because <laughs> the thing is, it's like, <laughs> You see a white light, and yeah. then I just like drop back in, like straight away. And then I just look around, and there's like like medical staff. There's like players around me. I'm looking at the uh, main player, David Warner. He's like on the floor like this. I can't move. And then I start laughing. I'm like, yeah. I'm just like, they're like, why are you laughing? Like, I think it's just something Probably in nerve. Shock. Yeah, yeah, shock and nerve. And then obviously, then I got stretched off, and then I was gone. I went to the hospital. They done a CT scan and everything. And then they're like, you can't move out the out of the chair so I was there for like two hours just like lying there like you know and then um they were like yeah so we scanned it we've got some good news they're like yeah everything's okay but the bad news is like you've got a fractured skull so I was like and then there's like a little bit of blood around that like area yeah then I just started panicking I'm like I'm dead I'm dying I can't play again this that and then stuff it, were it your kept... parents there at that game yeah, they came rushing I think um, yeah so they obviously were well, the guy, the, the whole coach, they rang my parents on my phone and they just. So they weren't me. at the game. They didn't see it. Uh, nothing, nothing. Thank like God. That. So yeah, they just got, they just got a phone. I remember my dad telling me, he's like, yeah, got the phone call. And then he's like, I told your mom. And then obviously they ran off to the hospital. Yeah. So it's quite, she, even my mom goes, she's like, I don't even know where I was. Like, I was so shocked. I don't even know if yeah. I'm going on a train or a bus or a car or something like that. Yeah. I don't even know. Walking. You know, and then when I, when I got to the hospital, she goes, when I got to the hospital, then I started getting back to my, like, senses and stuff. So Yeah. Because yeah. it's shock, right? Yeah, it's, it's proper shock. So it's just one of them ones where I think it's it's been tough. It's been a tough one. It's been a tough road. But then I'm glad to be back on the road, I think. That's that's the main thing. So when was this injury? Like... It was on 8th of uh, June 20, uh, 2019. Yeah, so That's still Saturday. fairly recent. Yeah, it was like two years ago, yeah. Yeah. So how long were you in the hospital? 
Exactly. I was in the hospital for like three and a half days, four days. They just wanted okay. to make sure like for four years. First, they were saying like 24 hours. They're just going to monitor yeah. me. So the, literally, I didn't sleep for like two, three days because all I was getting was the nurse going like that. Yeah. And then there's a light in my eye. Like, oh, yeah, your pupils are okay. Go sleep. Yeah. Every three hours, they were just... Making sure. And paracetamol. Uh, my head was like... Swollen. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that. It was like... like, like, like that. I think I got pictures of it somewhere, but yeah. And then, um, and that's it. And then the doctor came in and he, then he's like through the newspaper. I mean, he's like, yeah, you're famous now and stuff. And I'm just like, what? And then the doctor <laughs> is laughing. He's like, yeah, man, you're just, you're just all over right now. Like, and then um, there's loads of messages just pouring in, like, you know, like from different parts of the country, like, you know, around the world, like from Australia, Pakistan, India, USA, Canada, there's like loads of stuff going on. People are like, bro, like get well soon, man. Hope you're all right. Hope you're alive and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We're praying for you. We're doing this for you. You know, hope you're all right and stuff. And then, you know, I felt very overwhelmed and I was very surprised and I was um, very appreciating um, that time. You know, appreciate that, you know, these guys are praying for me. It's, it's, it's a blessing, I think, just to still be here. And, you know, I think that's that's the main thing, really. I think, you know, there, there was some side effects i would i would say there was some side effects i was gonna but... ask you how like how long did it take you to get function of your right side again i think it was functional after 30 minutes but i could i could tell there was something like a bit you know like less yeah i wasn't feeling very uh-huh. dominant on this one right. but i was feeling more strength on this one so it's just like i could feel there was like a little bit of tingling going on you know yeah you know, someone would touch me. I couldn't feel that same touch that I could feel on this one. So it's just mm-hmm. different, yeah, different, different Sometimes. stuff that I was feeling, yeah. Yeah. So then you had to stop playing for a while. I didn't play for like six, seven months, I think. Yeah, which is a lot for you. A lot of time, yeah. Yeah. So and what was right. that process like and where was your mindset during this time? So the doctors predicted six weeks. So they're like, don't play for six weeks. Um, but because of the side effects, I was getting like, um, I was getting blackouts and stuff. So it was oh, like, wow. uh, yeah, so curtains would like, if I would like try and train. Yeah. I remember I was like, just like, just moved around, like just a little bit quicker than what I was trying to do. Like normally I would yeah. walk, but I was just trying to like, you know, like do this. Yeah. And then it just started curtain rolling. And I remember I just sat on the floor. My sister's like, you're right. I was like, I can't see anything. So then like two seconds later, I closed my eyes and I opened them and then I could see everything. Again. Yeah. So, so then I knew there was something wrong. So they done the MRI like a month after. So they okay. done the MRI. I haven't still got the results for that yet. So I don't know. Oh. It's, it's been like two years. I still haven't got any results. But apparently if you don't get the results, it's... it's it no news is right. good news, technically. Yeah. Technically. So I just take it in that way. <laughs> and then Corona comes in as well. So oh, Right. Yeah, so I didn't get no results, but yeah, I think um, so. In the six months, they were they were like, yeah, definitely, there's some side effects on your right side, like because you because they done all these like pin checks and everything. They were like right. doing everything. They're like wiring me up. And and then you done, like, were dominant with your right, like you were right hand dominant before. Yeah, right hand dominant. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Okay. But I think they're pretty much equal now, um, okay. and like um, been developing new skills and stuff on each side. But I think now the right side is getting is very strong now. So I, I you've been like training that. a lot, please. Yeah, I've been putting myself to the test. I think just you yeah. know, trying to get to where I was because I lost a lot of weight. I put on weight. I, put, I was like weighing like eighty six kg. Okay. So there's a lot of and then the mindset. I think as soon as I got injured, the mindset was like, yeah, I'm gonna get back. But then when I started seeing the road crack in the six months, then yeah. the mental health started creeping in and then it, it, it just, it, it destroys you like on a, on a, on a level. So it, you, you went on a roller coaster ride emotionally, like mentally. I think uh, emotionally, physically, um, you know, waking up every day, I was like waking up late, um, started eating a lot of junk food. Um, and then obviously the training gets backtracked because it was supposed to be like six months and then gets backtracked to seven months, eight months and stuff like that. So it's just, I think people don't see that what happens in inside of like sports, you know, like when you have like a head injury, it's not very, it's not, it's not a very pleasant thing to have, you know, you don't wish it upon anyone, you know, but, mm-hmm. you know I don't, you know, it's examples I can say like, you know, like boxes and stuff like they go yeah. on like, it's, it's a very it impacts uh, things quite a lot and um, you got to look at it I think as a sports person as a sports you know athlete 
it's very difficult because sometimes it can be very lonely. Um, you know, you just want to be left alone. And um, I remember, I'm, like, and then at the same time, I had my head injury. I tore my Achilles as well, so I was on a cast as well. Yeah, not really tore it, I bru- bruised it. So yeah. well, that was another six weeks on top of that. So I had to do rehab for that. So I was doing like ankle stuff. I was in like the... You so you know, were like down, down. You are down and out. She just went bang, bang. And it, 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 was, it, it was done. Um, mm-hmm. But I, didn't, I knew that I would come back into the game. But people and everything, you know, people like, nah, don't do it. Like family, people, cousins, stuff like that. Or, you know, friends, bro, don't, don't do it, man. Like it's not worth it. What about it. your parents? Where's my they... parents like, oh, they're like, do it. Huh. Yeah, That's yeah, they're good. very supportive. Yeah, my mom was like, don't worry, you're gonna do it. My yeah. brother, you're gonna get back up. I think uh, the support system around me was really good. But then, when I couldn't do certain things that I couldn't do, like before, like I would do all these like crazy stuff, like you know, working out and stuff, mm-hmm. or you know, playing shots that I could do, like, and it was affecting me because I was getting tired quickly, fatigued, and then I was, I was very. I think I was getting very angry and stuff as well, very anxious, I was getting anxiety, very angry. And I think, yeah, it, did, it, t- it took a big toll on my uh, body and mind, soul, whatever. So the- how did you, or how do you manage that? Because I'm sure it's still like, it's, you're going to go through these emotions and life is going to happen and all that. But I feel you've overcome a lot of the darkness quote unquote, right? And now you're just on your way up and up and I see it. But how have you gone from that place to now where you're at mentally? So I think let, let's 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 talk back to yeah men, mental mentally. Yeah. So when I first like got the green light to say, you know what, you can start lightly training. I remember I was I was so happy. Like, I thought he's going to be, the doctor's just sitting there, just going to be like, God, you can't do nothing, that's you're finished, you know, just do whatever. And I was just going to tell the doctor, like, just, just get out of it, man. Like, I, can't <laughs> I need out, man. to see another doctor. Just make him <laughs> because I remember they done, like, the memory test, so they were like, oh, you know, there's a little bit of, like, just a little bit of slowness. So you, got, you just develop it, I think, by reading stuff and stuff, and, you know, also there's different ways to develop it. But I think when you're in that dark place, your, your thinking is very... There's, a, there's something in your head telling you, like, you know, you should do this, you should do that, you know? And, like, I remember I was having, like, suicide thoughts and stuff as well. Like, this, this is how bad it got. Like, I remember yeah. I was in that, in that place where I remember I was driving the car. This was in my old car, not in my new car. But I was sitting there. I remember I was, like, driving on the motorway. It's about, I think, speed limit's about 60, 70. But I was in, like, 90. And I'm like, I'm just going to take the car off. So it's, and then, it, and then, then like, I don't know what happened to me. I didn't, didn't make the decision to do, obviously I'm speaking to you right now, but yeah. when I look back at it, there was something in my head that made me, I just saw like flashbacks of my parents, like, you know, the faces, you know, yeah. like my brother, you know, my friends or, you know, people that I love around me. Yeah. I, saw, I started seeing that. And then I saw like, you know, cricket as well and like different stuff. I started looking at like life, like, if I'm still here, you know, like family in the future, stuff like that. I started looking at that. And I think that's what just stopped me to um, not do what I wanted to do. Now, was that, like, that's huge. I kind of need to, like, stop and be like, yeah. let's take a moment. Because that's a hard thing to digest, right? Like, watching you and where you are now. Yeah. To hear that, it makes me really sad. Like, I'm glad you overcame it, but it makes me really sad that you got to that point. Has there been multiple times where you felt that way? Or it was like the one time, thank God, nothing happened, or you didn't make that decision. And now you've since just continued to move forward from that. So I think it happened a couple of times. You think it in your head. I think when you're sitting there and you've got your headphones in, you know, you're listening to stuff, you know, you're listening to all these like motivational things. Then you're listening to like, I started listening to things like, uh, I remember like normally I would listen to motivational things. Then I started looking at things like, oh, when you're down and out, you know, mm-hmm. if you can't get back up, stuff like that. Just stupid things I think I was just looking at. And it's just making my mind just fry inside. It's like a, you know, like a computer chip. It was like frying. Like, yeah. 
kind of like a mind fuck, back. right? Yeah, it's literally, I was gone. I think uh, even like, and then you, then you wake up, normally you're active, and then you've got like a kind of belly coming out of your, you know, right. the bottom, and then obviously your arms and everything is just like, you know, like all puffy. Yeah, you don't feel like you. Yeah, you don't feel like the same thing. And then you certain things you're getting out of breath, just climbing up the stairs and stuff as well, stuff, you know, just things. And then there's a lot of, like, you know, even at work, there was a lot of frustration going on and stuff like that. And then it wasn't helping with anything. It wasn't helping. Like, you know, when you do a part-time job and stuff, mm-hmm. it wasn't helping. There's a lot of, like, I think I got very, I was, I was very angry as well. So I was getting a lot of mood swings and stuff. My character was changing completely. And then... Um, I don't know what happened to me. I just, um, yeah, I think after the months that went past, I started working on my mental health um, in my head, you know, just, you know, finding ways, different ways, you know, going on walks, you know, then obviously gradually, incrementally training again. Mm-hmm. Then um, then lockdown came. I think that was a blessing. I think that's that's where the whole thing changed. That's interesting. That's where the, whole, the, whole, the whole thing huh. changed. Okay. Last, year, last year in lockdown, I remember it was in about April. Yeah. So I was training, but I wasn't training as hard. Mm-hmm. And then I remember they were like, oh, oh, we're locking everything down. You're going to be locked down for like three, four months. In my head, I thought, See, this is... And then I started, you know, working on different skills. Like I started doing my art again, drawing. Yeah. Then I started YouTube. Yeah. Like My brother was like, do it, do it, do it. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then I done my first video. I remember sitting on this chair, like with this whole yeah. thing, and just like going crazy, <laughs> like dancing. And also, and then that's where it's your boy, J-Man was born. Yeah. So, yeah, so he came to life, that character. Um, and then that's it really. And then from there, and then I started training hard. Then I started doing all these videos, like working out. Trying to put him in the worst mood P1 cleaner than the church shoes And they point to just to hurt them All red lamps to tease them None of these toys on these two Made the whole year in a week to Main chick out of their league to And then I dropped it like KG I just like randomly started dropping Like I was doing like Taibo and stuff I don't know if you know what Taibo is like I know what Taibo is but... Yeah, 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 yeah I started okay. doing that um, I still do it like now So it's pretty it's, it's okay. good i like it then i started losing weight then i was like okay cool then diet started getting better yeah uh, then I'm like a vegetarian as well like since yeah. january from uh 2020, I'm, 2020. You know, okay and then then i started re- then my speed and stuff and then then obviously we had a little season of cricket after that so after the, lockdown yeah after, after lockdown. lockdown okay uh first couple of games i'll say i just felt like i was myself again like i started scoring runs with the bat uh, bowling wasn't as sharp as it was, right. honestly. And then towards the end of the season, I just had a, a like the, one of the best seasons, I think, like towards the end of the season, like everything just started clicking again. Getting yeah, back it, it was emotional, you know. Um, yeah. I, I hit 100. I remember like 132 runs in, in a game. And I think that the hunger, the desire, the passion, everything started clicking through, you know. And mm-hmm. I remember there's, you know, people trying to throw in the comments like, oh, you know, you got hit on the head, you're not the same. But, you know, my mindset got so strong in that lockdown and beyond the lockdown that it just didn't it just didn't affect me like i remember i was like batting and the guy behind the wicket keeper mm-hmm. he was like oh you know you got hit you know the same guy and then i remember the next ball went for like six so it you know it doesn't matter and then i you know and i scored big that game as well you know i scored very fast that game so it's different things and then i remember my speed started coming back so i got mm-hmm. fit uh speed started coming back and then people were just enjoying it and the whole vibe around me was just like yeah man you know what this guy like like he's got it in him 
but it just like this is the time now and then obviously then now we're in a lockdown again yeah it's just literally like from where i was i, I would say from here it's, it comes in so i think sometimes the mental side it creeps in a little bit but it's yeah. ways i i got different ways now to overcome it Manage. so before it before it starts like attacking me and then right. i start feeling like that i'm getting into oh, this you know, yeah. anxiety you know all this type of stuff that comes in mm-hmm. and you just get into that bubble you shut everything off yeah but now i go into a different bubble yeah where i think positive things and you know i say positive things about me like you know like law of attraction mm-hmm. works wonders so it's just like you know like in my head i know that i'm going to do it i believe that i'm going to do it so before i would say when i do it so there's a difference yeah. when someone says when i do it or if i do it you right. can't say that. if you don't believe it then you know you're, you're going to say that isn't it? like before my injury i would say these type of things like oh if i do it, you know I'll, i'll do it this stuff but now i say i'm going to do it yeah now like i am i'm there i'm already there but i'm just on that journey where it's just you know it, it go, the journey's yeah. never straight the journey's never straight it always goes you know and then in a rocky way but yeah that's that's it but nowadays it's just like i'm there you know you've got to sometimes it's just like you've got to like you know like muhammad ali used to say like he used to be like you got to you know like act it and stuff and then you know stuff like that but not necessarily acting in a bad way mm-hmm. but you've got to be professional about what you do and that's where you're going to get recognized you know people are going to recognize you for your hard work people are going to recognize you you know what this guy's got something in it like everywhere like i'm going i get that feedback you know like when i'm because i'm in the elite academy now so that's like the national fast bowling academy of like the uk okay. and it's run by two coaches and you know there's a lot of people in there like hand selected few people they select yeah. it's exciting because yeah. it shows that from where i was yeah. to now i know what i can do it so it's just one of them ones when you know when the moment's going to come you've got to take the moment and you've got to you know you've got to put your heart out and give 120% and but it leave was- also a lot of hard work and perseverance on your end right i think yeah you've got to you've got to just it's it's about just putting the hard yeah the hard work like i say a hard work beats talent so when talent doesn't work hard like yeah. we can be gifted with a talent we can give, be gifted with a talent but if we don't work hard then there's no point you know you know i mean there's no point of doing it like and never force yourself to do something i think that's that's the key never force yourself to do it let it happen naturally and you know enjoy that moment enjoy it, you know daily doing it mm-hmm. and enjoying it um because if you're not enjoying it there's no point doing it it's, that's how it, how it goes 100% with anything, with anything you know sometimes people you know they, that's why they suffer too much like they're doing something that you know they may force to do yeah so just make sure if you, if you're doing anything just just do what you need to do and just enjoy life i think life's too short to be you know like stressing about things and you know i think young i think young people like young males as well you know we don't speak about it too much like mental health and stuff as well like we're very scared so stigma right there's just a lot of like just a lot of i think new topics especially in the south asian culture there's a stigma behind it i think what is it under the rug sorry i think with everyone i think around the world i think if you look at it like you know like even like some like famous people they've done it they you know mm-hmm. missed suicide or you know they ended their life because of you know mental health issue yeah i think what it is i think women they speak about it mm-hmm. they're very open to speaking about it you know but i think with a male i think female male male or a guy like mm-hmm. me let's take example let's take me like i talk about it because i you know i found a way to talk about it now and i can right. relate because i can relate to it mm-hmm. and it's, it's a part of something that it's a part of my life now isn't it so it's something where i've been in the in the trenches and now i'm 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 coming back up so it's like to anyone out there that's listening right now so like i would just say you know like we've been taught like you know we're like this muscle person or you know like we're like built like a rock you know nothing's yeah. going to like penetrate like right now we can look like perfectly fine like when i look at someone they you know they can have everything out of ferrari they can be like they can even be cristiano ronaldo or something yeah. you know what i mean you can have everything you like chilling good life you know playing the best football but we don't know inside what's going in his head like he can be like you know he won't show you like yeah i'm just smiling you're smiling around 
and inside you don't know what's going on inside no idea yeah like at home he could be just sitting there like just sitting there looking at a wall thinking about you know i want to kill myself or what if this happens or what if that happens if this happens to me or something and that's where i think it's, it, it needs to be spoken about i think just need to just go out that no one's going to judge you on your character like oh he's he's got mental health he's weak or something it doesn't mean you're weak it's just people will start you know respecting you and saying you know what we we can help this guy or something you know what i mean so it's just like you're not alone you're never alone you're never alone it's true was that your experience like you ha- like you talk about how you had a really good support system so for you you had that support system and i love that you're encouraging other males to speak about it and like be their truth rather than hide it right so do you think it would have been harder obviously if you didn't have the support system like what did your parents i think i think in the beginning i didn't really have the support system because they were just confused because i think as yeah. age parents they don't know what mental health is um, so you have to obviously explain to them obviously because i got my sister as well she had it a little bit so so it becomes i think my brother had it ages ago but he didn't know he had it so he used to be a professional like semi professional snooker player oh as, wow yeah before so um obviously he does youtube you know all sorts now i don't know what he does but he's in his own little <laughs> he's in his own little but, but yeah just like uh, referring to my brother and sister i think their support system was very different because they you were talking to me all the time like trying to see like am i alright you know checking up on me and then obviously because my sister and brother has been obviously back then there's no diagnostic of what it is it could have right. been depression could have been something else so like mm-hmm. now obviously they say it's mental health before yeah. it, was, it was called something else i'm not too sure right. okay yeah uh, there's no diagnostic or any like name given to what it was obviously i remember my dad he was so confused he was like what is it's like you know they would just be like oh it's, it's just, yeah what is it it's just it's nothing you know you just yeah. making making it up and stuff and also but now he understands as also well, it's crazy how the great the, right yeah so he understands my mom understands i think my mom is yeah. a little bit seriously too much but she knows that now she can see the difference from where i was like where i used to get like angry over like small things and right. my mood just switch quite a lot i get anxiety i could anxiety is my anxiety was quite weird cuz i used to feel like my heart is like dropping in my like stomach or something and i'm just like just sitting there like like frozen in time yeah so it was, it was quite bad like from where it was before yeah and then i get nervous i'll be sh- uh, sweating <laughs> a lot so yeah i mean if no one knew you like yeah. they think i'm happy I think i'm fine 100% yeah they get that because you're such a like the way you project yourself like you said it's very positive very happy go lucky very like let's embrace this day and like make it good kind of deal right so when you talk about this i think it's really one i think it's super important two i think it's really brave that you know you can talk about it so openly because i hope that whoever's listening if they're going through something similar then they feel like they're not alone but they also feel that there's someone i can relate to with this right yeah i think that's the purpose behind my youtube as well mm-hmm. i think it just like i started developing different skills so you know speaking listening stuff like that you know some time away from the support like sport itself as an athlete so you know it's it's just one of them ones where i just think it was a bit of a blessing in disguise when i got injured so you know i can talk about you know behind the camera and you know showcase and motivate people to say you know what it doesn't matter what happens in life mm-hmm. we're going to we're going to achieve it you know we're going to get and then people look up to if he can do it, i can do it you mm-hmm. know what i mean so it's just like that that's that's the effect i want to have it's not about you know like i think some people think yes yeah, about money perspective or something like for me it's not really a, a money perspective thing i think i i do it for the love of the sport so that but then youtube being i've just fallen in love with now as well where it's like i do it pretty much every single day probably you know i'm editing here and there you know my <laughs> editing skills are changing so from where my editing skills for and going to that i just i'm just enjoying it now so it's just you know i talk about my life i think 
and then just go through the the gears i think just tell people how i'm feeling you know is, is there any mental health creeping in today and then you know it makes them feel like you know like you know like uh, you know what this guy is like you know he knows what he's talking about and he's been through it and we're going through this right now and just just to inspire the next generation inspire people in general like you know it doesn't matter what age you are you know everyone goes through you know mental health and stuff like that and it just needs to be okay. spoken about more in life you've got to prepare yourself for life life is happening life is not easy no life is not easy i think people think it, it's easy but i think it's, it can be one of the you know toughest things and that's that's what that's life, what you, builds your character yeah i think life is tough and i think we go through roller coasters and i think we just have to appreciate the good things more so yeah, and just try and get through the bad and yeah. persevere right like yeah, 110%. I think it's it's just, you know, like this is how I live. I live like every day is my last, la- last day. So when I go to bed, when I'm putting my bed out, I'm going to bed. I know that I've trained. I've given 120%. I know I've eaten well. I know I've given love to my family, given love to my friends. I know I've done a YouTube video. I know I've trained cricket. Mm-hmm. I've done everything in my power today to go sleep happy. And if I don't wake up, then I don't wake up. But I know that I've done everything in my power and I'm happy and I'm going to sleep happy. So yeah. that's the main thing. That's how I live it now. That's what you strive yeah. to do now. Yeah. I think also on the flip side, we have to like, I'm a workaholic, you know, my hours. There are times where I get mad at myself for like resting or if I'm not as productive or if I like, I don't know when you don't train as hard, do you, give yourself a hard time i think everyone's hard on themselves i think yeah. even me like before my injury i was very hard on myself i never used to take rest i never rested one day i remember i was training like seven days a week i was playing games on saturday sunday midweek i was playing games but after everything that happened to me rest if you're resting rest sensibly like be smart with your training smart training smart everything you got to be smart you can't be like you know, like sometimes you can overwork your body, but you don't know you've overworked it. You might feel good, right. you might feel bad. So it's just one of them ones where you're working smartly, but then work hard. So hard working at the same time, but work smart. If you need like a 10 minute break, have a 10 minute break, no problem. In that 10 minutes, relax, do a bit of meditation or something, or listen to some music, just relax, zone out, just switch off completely. Mm-hmm. Then come back to it. And then you see your back up and running. So just take your mind off something. Just just be a call a mate or something, or mm-hmm. you know, just just pl- play around with a cat or dog. Just or, completely. Yeah, just or, you know, just have a laugh with your mum or something, or you know, yeah. uh, dad, grandma, anyone, you know, stuff like that. Just switch off completely. I think that's the key. I think we sometimes forget to switch off, and then then yeah. it just keeps running. The brain keeps running, and mm-hmm. I think that's what I've learned now. So just you know, sometimes when you got to switch off, just switch off. Just don't worry about it. Don't. Don't worry about that. It just next, you know, every day is a new day. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to say, just don't worry what happened yesterday. You get back up, you'll be better the next day. That's the key. Totally agree. Where do you see yourself in the next three years, five years? Where do you want to be? Five years, I, I know exactly what I'm, what I'm going to do, okay. but I'm not going to say it. Okay. Because I keep, I think I keep that one to myself. Fair so enough. five years from now, I know exactly what I want. Okay. Exactly. Write it down you on know? a piece of paper, and then in five years, we're gonna pull out that piece of paper, and I want you to read it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. No problem. It's written down. It's actually in my diary somewhere. I've okay. got it. Down. So that's that's definitely done. So that that okay. that journey will start now. Obviously, like I said, restart my life at twenty five. So yeah, you know. We, we've come through the hard rocks. 23, 24 was a bit of a rocky road. But mm-hmm. now, 25, solid start. Boom, five years, boom. Um, next, yeah, so three years from now, professional cricket player. Yeah. Best YouTuber. <laughs> best, best, YouTuber <laughs> best YouTuber in the world. And um, just enjoying my life, I think. Yeah. And just be successful. I think you know it's gonna. It's, I've got a feeling it's gonna come. So I've got that feeling that it's coming soon. I so when you say it. successful, like this is what this whole um, 
series is really about is like we're all defining success on our own terms and in different ways so what does success mean for you be established i think be successful be be you know obviously fame at the same time mm-hmm. be a motivational person you know yes. an inspirational person i think that i've got two goals now as well so obviously cricket is my main goal um you know get back up get a contract um and become a professional cricketer you know and be worldwide known as mm-hmm. as the best <laughs> so you know you got to have that presence as well and it's just about backing yourself and enjoying it and you know believing it and just and then once you're there then you just conquer the the scene isn't it so it's just mm-hmm. about consistency working hard working smart and then youtubing the goal is just, just just be successful and just enjoy it i think i i enjoy it so much i don't I'm not worried about this whole you know like people come out here you know money and stuff um uh, yeah you want to make money at the same time but i think i do it for the love it's more yeah. about the passion the love same with cricket it's always been i think i remember someone asked me oh you you know you make loads of money in ipl i was I don't, I don't care about the money i just want to be there i want people to be screaming my my name because it fuels my body I, I know exactly what my targets are. I know mm-hmm. exactly what I need to do. I don't need to tell people what I'm going to do. I just just go there, let the bat, let the ball, let the whatever do the talking and it will just speak for itself. Speak itself into existence. Because I see it already. You have to vision it. Like in my head I always vision things like it's already been visioned. Like the mm-hmm. path has already been visioned. Like the bad times have gone. You know what I mean? So it's just about, you know, coming Come back. Yeah, literally the comeback. I was like three more episodes now left and then, you know, you start a new series. So that's it. That that was the journey and now now 2021 when I look at it this is this is where like even like from a birthday I think. Like even at the beginning of the year mm-hmm. at 25 like it's just I restart my life and I know exactly what I need to do. Like whereas before sometimes you can lose your way. You can lose your way, but there's always going to be a, a way it's going to find you or you find that mm-hmm. you know what I mean so whatever is kind of meant to be will be yeah. yeah it's true it's like um they say kismet you can't stop it yeah you can't st- you can't stop it if it's meant to be it will happen it doesn't matter you can be broken you can be alive you can be you know you can you can even be doing something else yeah. but it will always come back and it will it will it will always always be there i think that's a great place to start <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, thank you for doing no, this. Thank you very much for having me on. No, I really appreciate Fun. it. No, That's it's good. Flew by. Yeah, it flew by. What's the time? I didn't know. What's the time? Yeah, so thank you so much, Jay, for doing this. That totally flew by. And I don't know, I think you've overcome so much. And it's only the beginning for you. So I'm excited to see you as a professional cricketer and... follow your journey and follow you on youtube and yeah thanks do you have any final words for the audience i just want to say i just want to thank you uh, for having me on the podcast today um, it's been a pleasure i think it is it's very exciting i was very nervous at the same time but then <laughs> it's very exciting to come on here you know and just uh, speak about you know stuff and just speak about life my life and you know i appreciate that you've had me on here to like um explain everything to the viewers and i hope they enjoy it that's the main thing and i hope they you know take something away from it i think that's the main thing you know even though it might not be something major but at least they have something in their head and they'll think about it and say you know what they'll be learn this off you know j j kishan blah or you know it's your boy j man <laughs> yo 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 <laughs> i'm waiting <laughs> for it <laughs> but yeah um now that's the main thing i think and um now nah, i just i think it's just it's a great stepping stone like you said it's 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 just the beginning for me now like mm-hmm. it's just, it's like i've restarted my life like i say just you know it's the a reset chapter. button yeah yeah next chapter and now it's just onwards and upwards you know obviously i don't look back at the past i think everything from the past that was attached to me i think it 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 just goes away and now the opportunities will start to present itself and mm-hmm. you'll start seeing it slowly and you just got to believe it and it doesn't matter just you know just overrule the situation absolutely no nah, it's just it's been a pleasure i think that's that's the main thing you know and um, i thank you <laughs> no, i do I, i thank you from the bottom of my heart for having Aww. me actually no been, i it's been a pleasure when i heard more about your journey and like you know we become friends and stuff i'm i was like i need him on this series because 
you've gone through a lot and you've persevered and it shows and your dedication to move forward. I see it daily. So. No, I really appreciate it. Thank you. say my youtube name or you can do whatever i don't really mind it's your boy chima <laughs> <laughs> i was like he's gonna come in with all this energy and i'm like no <laughs> just come in like yo like shoot. check out the channel <laughs> just yeah make sure you subscribe <laughs> <laughs> to marketing couture <laughs>